All right, welcome back. New episode of Friday Night Comics, and it's a big one. It's I'm going to be counting down my top 30 CGC graded comic books here, and it's been about, I think, three years or so since I did this last time. Man, there's been a lot of changes in the industry for sure. I mean, prices have plummeted for a lot of things. Um, I'm not sure where some of these might have ranked last time. I didn't keep track of that, but this is where they rank today. And the ones at the top, like the top four or five, are, are pretty steady, but... Oops. Uh, anyway, coming in at number 30, this is a Marvel premiere, number 15, and this features the first appearance of Iron Fist. Now, what's going on with this guy? He was in a Netflix series that I guess didn't do too well, and I'm not sure if he's going to be coming back in any sort of capacity, but that one checks in at number 30, and just to give you sort of a reference, this is about a 200 and maybe $275 book. It was really close between that and then um, Marvel Star Wars 42 with Boba Fett. But I have a CGC 9.2, but it fell a little bit short. Okay, here's one of my, um, I purchased this on the spec hype at that time for the Inhumans. And uh, this is Fantastic Four number 48, 45. And the first appearance of the Inhumans, which uh, they appeared in a god-awful miniseries. And then after which this value of this book tanked. Um, I know I spent about, geez, I want to say like 600 bucks for it. Memory served me somewhere in that range. And now it's like, you know, half that. But that's not the most egregious drop-off. Um, that one doesn't even appear in here anymore. Uh, 27 is this Spawn number one, signed by Todd McFarlane with the CGC Signature Series uh, 9.8. And when are we gonna see this guy again? I mean, he's just, he's ideal to be sort of relaunched into sort of a new movie franchise, I would think. It's been a long time. And he's a really cool character. Nice bold signature there from Todd McFarlane. So that is, oh, I'm putting these in backwards, 28. Number 27 is a book that I purchased raw on eBay and then sent it in much later. And it's Doctor Strange 169 from June of 1968. And this is the first Doctor Strange in his own title. I believe it was called Strange Tales leading up to this. But now he uh, has built up a large enough audience and popularity he deserved his own title. Aptly named Doctor Strange. Number 26 is going to be Transformers. CGC 9.6 from 1984. I just didn't want to pay 9.8 pricing for this. I did for G.I. Joe. I did it for this. I'm not sure why I thought. Maybe because the this was much more money. I mean, I think this might have been in a 9.8 somewhere, at least at the time anyway, you know, one and a half, you know, maybe $1,700-ish. And this was well under $1,000. This is a few hundred bucks, if I recall. And not unlike with graded cards, you can't really tell a difference between a... 9.6 and 9.8, like you can't between a, usually between a PSA 9 and a PSA 10, for that matter. Number 25 is another 9.6-er. This amazing Spider-Man number 252, which is the, well, for a while it was determined this was the first appearance of the black uh, costume. I think not that long ago, there's another book that shares the same distinction, so like a tie. And I think it's Marvel Team Up, something or another, that also features Spider-Man in the black costume. So number 25, let me get these things back in here properly. And number 24 on the countdown is going to be another issue of Spawn. 
I like this a lot. This is a homage to um, Amazing Fantasy 15, Spider-Man, classic, legendary book, iconic, whatever you want to call it. This is Spawn 221, and you can see what they did there with the cover. It's also a signature series signed by Tom McFarlane, and um, this is from uh, 2018. Might be the most recent book that I have in here. <clears throat> I don't buy comics anymore, at least off the rack. You know, I probably, you know, I was doing it on a regular basis. I'd go in every month and I'd buy whatever three to five titles I subscribe to, Batman and, and Superman, whatever. Um, I wasn't reading them. You know, I literally probably have 200 to 300 comic books I just bought <clears throat> and just put it in a stack and it. Finally, I got to the point where, like, what am I doing, you know? Um, I just don't have the time anymore um, with the kids and all that, and I decided it just wasn't, you know, a good thing to do, just to be dropping money for no reason and building up this bulk inventory of stuff, which I like to sort of uh, whittle down at some point. All right, up next is another signature series and another homage cover. This is Detective Comics 1000. But I tell you, it's hard to not get the glare on these slabs, but signed by Alex Ross. I'm a big fan of his artwork. Alex Ross. So this, I want to say this was bought directly from his website, I think, uh, a few years ago. Well, this is 2000. So this is a, from this recent book. It's 2019. <clears throat> so I spoke too soon. And that was 23. Number 22 is going to be this one. I like this one. Amazing Spider-Man 239, 238, which is the uh, first appearance of the Hobgoblin. And this one has the tattoos, which is kind of important uh, for optimum value, lakeside tattoos. I bought this uh, raw. And I submitted this, and I, I paid like around, oh geez, anywhere between 40 and 70 bucks. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. And so needless to say, I was very pleased and pleasantly surprised I got such a high grade on it. I didn't expect a 9.6. Um, so there's that. Here's a book that's probably lost half its value since I purchased it. Heir to the Empire, number one, and this features the first appearance of Grand Admiral Thrawn, who was the featured bad guy in the Ahsoka series. And you're going to see him again because I believe there's a follow-up series, but then also a movie where I think everything kind of culminates, I think. At least people are, know more about that sort of thing than I do. But anyway, cool book. And I, I had bought this, um, so I bought this graded. I have another copy that I submitted whenever it was that I had bought that originally many years ago. Um, and it came back at 9.4. But I wanted the 9.8. So this was a $70-ish purchase raw. And when I submitted it, it came back 9.2. This is uh, New Mutants 98 featuring the first appearance of Deadpool. And we'll probably see a little more popularity in this book because of the, um, the movie that's coming out, which looks really awesome. And so where do I have this one? Um, 22, I guess. New Mutants 98. And this has to be 21. I wanted a Stan Lee signature book, and so I decided on this one. It was a few years ago before he passed away. Uh, this is Spider-Man number one, Tom McFarlane's Spider-Man number one from 1990. But Stan signed it right here. And it looks like he used too thick of a marker because it's almost like the you know all the letters blend in to each other. But it's definitely a signature. And uh, this was signed in 2015, Stan Lee. So I wanted to have at least one Stan Lee autograph. And that was pretty inexpensive at the time. I'm, I'm gonna say it was somewhere around 
400 bucks. Um, so anyway, let me just move this over here. This will be number 20, another Bronze Age. Conan, the Barbarian, Conan, the Barbarian number one. The first movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger I thought was really well done. The second one, Conan the Destroyer, not so much. I think it had Wilt Chamberlain in there. <laughs> it's one of the actors. Uh, okay, number 19, Luke Cage, Hero for Hire. So this one's been pretty stable. Uh, where do I have this one? Hero for Hire. Yeah, I think I, this one actually has gone up since I bought it. I have this around 500 to 550. Um, and I paid like 300 for this thing. And I probably went after it when there was talk about that Netflix series first being, I guess, explored. So it would have been maybe a couple of years prior to the maybe the debut of that series. Um, me doing my speculative buying back then. Not unlike this. This one, I think I, this is Amazing Spider-Man 101. And that's uh, Morbius. And uh, this one, yeah, I lost a little bit of value from what I paid. Maybe down about $150 or so. Um, but all the comic books, just like every other collectible, have uh, suffered. You know, there was a big run up you know, in cards, and then I went to games and comics and all that, and um, it's coming back down. Uh, here's really cool, one of my favorite covers ever this uh, Incredible Hulk 340. And this is signed by Todd McFarlane, also 9.6 grade here. <clears throat> Looks a little bit off center, top to bottom. As you can see how the the text is a little bit, you know, right at the top edge of that that border, but it seems like centering doesn't impact comic grades as much as it does card grades. I don't think so. So badass cover, Tom McFarlane. So that brings me to this guy, which is going to be what number? Ooh. 14, I guess. And it's Fantastic Four, number 52. First appearance of the Black Panther. And uh, I got this early, and I got it cheap. And this one, where do I have it right now, value-wise? Uh, I got it around, I guess, 800-ish. So I paid like maybe about half of that, whatever year that was, maybe a little more than half of that. And this thing got up to like, I think like $3,000 or something ridiculous. Um, and now it's back down to around uh, $800-ish, I guess. Um, but comic books were certainly not immune to the uh, COVID era madness. Collectibles Madness. All right, next up is another Spider-Man. This one, yeah, this one had quite a ride as well. This Amazing Spider-Man 309.6, which I think I picked up for around $1,500. And it went to close to $3,000. And now it's below what I paid. It's, uh, I have an 825-ish. The first, uh, origin, first full appearance of, of Venom, and it's always been a key book, and it certainly isn't rare. Um, but yeah, so it took a little bit of bath. Um, the, the the one I took the the biggest bath on possibly would be the Young Avengers number one, which when I jumped in on it, it was like eleven hundred dollars, and now it's I think it's a sub two hundred dollar book. Um, here's GI Joe number one. This and the Transformers I purchased around the same time. They kind of go hand in hand. I mean, I grew up watching both cartoons religiously. Um, yeah, I mean, the first appearance, a lot of first appearances here, obviously. Um, nice, crispy 9.8 cover. Had it as a kid. I remember buying it off the rack at the local, um, what do you call it, like the beer, a little, little mart, little mini mart. 
and um, they used to have comics all set up. And I remember I bought this in the dollar fifty. So 1982, a dollar fifty was a lot of money for a comic book. Um, X Men number 94, and this book holds the distinction of being the first ever graded comic purchase. Many 15 years ago or more, and maybe it was like $500 back then. And here I have it at number 11. And um, I got it at like around 900. So X Men number 94. And so this is uh, where the new X Men begins. And it's the second appearance of a lot of people. The first appearances for many of these key guys was in giant size X Men. Um, and I was ignorant. For, for the longest time, I thought that was the book. I had no knowledge of giant size until later. I was like, oh, that's the one I got to get. And so I ended up getting them both. Um, Another big COVID uh, price swing book here. This is number, I guess, number 10, right? Uh, yeah, this will be number 10 in my collection. Ultimate Fallout number four, 9.8. And I, I paid $1,500, 1500 for this. And almost immediately went up to like, I mean, I bought it right before the train took off. And it got up to, I think, around 27, 2800. And then now I have it down around 1,000. First appearance of Miles Morales, Spider-Man. So a huge book, but again, not rare. Uh, certainly in high grade, a lot of high grade copies floating around, variant covers, whatever. So um, that's number 10. Number nine is going to be this Incredible Hulk. This is Incredible Hulk number 180. And the reason why I got this is because this really is the first full, of, well, not the, the first appearance of Wolverine in comic books. He appears on a big splash page at the end of this, and uh, they, yeah, they describe it as the first appearance of Wolverine as a cameo. But I mean, appearance is an appearance. This is his first appearance. But this book doesn't get the attention that the uh, the next issue does, as everybody knows. Uh, probably the biggest, most significant book from the Bronze Age, unless you want to include Teenage Turtles from right at the very end of the Bronze Age, technically, 1984. But I think Incredible Hulk uh, 181 hold that for me. But anyway, here's 180 from 1974, October. I don't know what's going on with this guy. They just can't seem to get this movie off the ground. Uh, this is Tomb of Dracula number 10. And this is the first um, appearance of Blade, the Vampire Slayer. And they had an actor tap to play uh, Blade, and then I guess they can't get a development thing going with the story or the schedules, and, and who knows when we're gonna see this guy in the MCU, which has become a complete disaster over the last couple of years, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, this is number, number eight in my list. Tomb of Dracula, and I bought it cheap. I wanna say under $300 whatever year that was. And um, this one I have assigned a value of, I guess around a thousand bucks in an 8.0 grade. Send it again, many, I've sent it once, um, sent it many times actually in the past that my target grade for Bronze Age books is 8.0. Thought it provided the, the best balance of, uh, I guess, visual appeal and economics, um, if that makes sense. Here's a, this book blew up as well. I enjoyed that, that TV series with um, Oscar Isaac. I thought it was really well done. Um, Werewolf by Night 32, featuring the first appearance of the Moon Knight, Mark Spector. Now this book wasn't cheap even when I did buy it many years ago. I paid like $700 for this book. It was one of those books that was just really expensive. Nobody knew why, but it was. and. It, is what it was what it was uh, I mean the cover is it's got this blue and it, you know it could show I guess um, defects easily enough perhaps but um, this one nowadays I estimate at around eleven hundred dollars for this book but this one got up to somewhere like around three to four thousand it was ridiculous I mean you know like with the cards and all that um, Okay, this one is a modern, 
at some point, I think this character will will get some attention in the, in the movies. Uh, this is Nyx number three. This features the uh, first appearance of X-23. X-23 is um, uh, the girl, the little girl that appeared in Logan. So essentially the female Wolverine. And uh, she nowadays, I mean, I don't follow Marvel Comics, but I think she's on the X-Men team. Um, but this one I, I picked up and I think I've, uh, yeah, it's gone backwards from when I did buy it by See about four hundred dollars, four five hundred dollars from what I paid for it. Top five territory number five. This is a cool book. One of my early. This might have been my second graded purchase. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man one twenty nine. And um, you know, back then I didn't pay attention to such things, and I probably. The way I collect now, I want to grab this particular 8.0 because there's a little bit of a spine roll, I guess they call it. So it's like, it's not centered as well. It's like there's a more border here at the top. And then as you go down, it sort of like diminishes. So it's not really a centered cover, but. And this book was 500 bucks. Um, geez, maybe it was like 2008. Time frame somewhere in there. And nowadays, I've got this at around uh, $2,000. First appearance of the Punisher, and also the Jackal. Number four is this one. This one shot up a lot, like a lot. Unless, you know, I only had one sale to reference from a couple of months ago. Uh, this Batman 227, which is... Um, Another homage cover um, from Detective Comics from 50 years prior, 30, 40 years prior, Detective Comics 31. Um, and this is a, um, oh gosh, what am I drawing a blank here? Uh, Neil Adams um, cover. And I have a value of this. I signed it. Uh, $2,150. I think that's what the last one sold. I've been to it for about $500. And uh, I guess just a uh, That's the significance of it. It's a Neil Adams classic cover, cover swipe, that kind of thing. And when I was putting this together, because I haven't priced out my books in a long time. In fact, I think the last update was like maybe 18 months prior to when I did it maybe a few weeks ago in preparation of this video. Um, so anyway, that's number four in my collection. And number three is going to be, he's in the news lately because I think Ryan Gosling is going to be playing the Ghost Rider in a future MCU movie adaptation. This was also a big book. This one got up to around 5000 bucks in an eight grade. Um, I spent like a couple few hundred and then now I have it at like 20, 2650. The Ghost Rider. And the number, the top two, here's number two. These one and two have basically been the same the entire time. They're just worth less. Worth less, not worthless. Uh, <laughs> Giant Size X-Men number one. And this is the book for the modern X-Men. First appearance of the new X-Men, Storm, Nightcrawler, Colossus, Thunderbird. And um, the second full appearance of Wolverine. I remember I bought this book. I uh, it was one of those off eBay off eBay deals, and I was actually making a trip to South Jersey, and this guy lived in South Jersey, like Morristown, and actually I agreed to meet this guy, and I um, was gonna do a cash deal for like seven hundred dollars, and I went to the I didn't have that kind of cash. I never had that kind of cash. I mean, I went to the ATM, and it only let me take out five hundred dollars. <laughs> so I meet the guys and I got 500 and maybe some, you know, maybe like 20, 30, dollars more. And so he basically put the rest of it on, um, he had like a little credit card phone thing I could do or whatever. So, um, anyway, uh, yeah, that's how I acquired this one. It's like 700, 750 bucks. And so nowadays this one is worth supposedly 3000, 3000. It was worth more than double that during the boom. And then lastly, and, and this should come as no surprise, that Hulk 181, first full appearance of Wolverine. 
and um, yeah, so that's when I have five grand. That's, that's about what this is would sell for nowadays. I want to say I got up as high as eight or nine. Um, but yeah, certainly an important book. And maybe the biggest key, as I said, of the Bronze Age, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I know Turtles, I don't know, I don't consider, I mean, I know technically the Bronze Age, but I don't, I think this is the key to have. Um, and so this one was 1100 bucks. So it certainly wasn't cheap, even when I bought it, maybe 15, 12 to 15 years ago. Um, and it's not rare, certainly plenty of copies out there. Um, but an important book, to say the least. So that's it. Those are my top 30 uh, CGC graded comic books for 2024. And at this rate, we'll do it all again in uh, 2027. Thanks for watching.